Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Pen to Paper. I'm Rob Orpilla, better known as Kuro the Artist, and today I'm going to be an animator. <laughs> The concept of how traditional animation is typically created is fairly well known. A series of drawings, usually done on transparent paper against a light board, are created with varying differences between each other. When colored and put into a special program, these drawings, now known as frames, are showcased one after another at rapid speeds, which can simulate motion. This technique has been around for about a century, although, in the recent years, other methods such as flash animation and CGI have been increasingly replacing this method. Traditional animation is still fairly commonplace, and in my opinion, the most fascinating and beautiful to look at. But exactly how many drawings does it take to create, say, an average episode of a cartoon program? The average length of a cartoon episode is about 11 minutes in the modern age, which is commonly animated at 24 frames per second. There are 660 seconds in 11 minutes, and a simple equation gives us 15,840 total frames. Based on the isolated logic we used, this equation does make sense. But that's assuming that there are 24 new drawings in each individual second. Which isn't the case. Let's take a look at breaking down these animation frames in a bit more intricate detail. There's a lot of ground to cover when deciding exactly how to break down the process of creating animation frames, but the main focus of today will be the concept of layers. For those that may not know, when one drawing is placed upon another to form a completed picture, each of those individual drawings is considered its own separate layer. The principle of this concept would be the difference between an animated character, one may refer to as the foreground, and the environment around them, the background. As you can see, while the character has a lot of movement, the background remains static. This is achieved by layering multiple drawings of a character against the same background. As the drawings of the character change to progress the motion, the same image of the background is reused for every frame of the shot, until the camera angle changes. Sometimes, the background is made much larger than the canvas of the screen, and only a fraction of it is shown at any given time. The background is then slightly adjusted between each frame, so the scene can continue to change as the character moves around the environment. This technique is frequently used for simulated camera zooms and cranes. Sometimes, multiple layers of the same background can be used and scaled accordingly, giving off a three-dimensional effect that draws the audience further into the animated world. This technique was invented using a multi-plane camera, but is now done digitally. Although most studios now rely on a completely computer-generated three-dimensional background, with the animated drawings keyed in frame by frame to correctly correlate with the dynamic camera angles. Now, remember, we are looking for the amount of drawings it takes to create a cartoon, not just the amount of frames. So between a character and its own background, we already know it takes at least two drawings to make up a frame. By that logic, we should just take the number from our original equation and double it, correct? Well, we still have a few more variables to go over before coming to that conclusion. Let's take a look at our next key factor. As we discussed earlier, the frames of a cartoon character are changing approximately 24 times per second, yet the background remains the same. A new drawing isn't needed every time for the background, as the frames progress so long as the camera angle stays the same, and sometimes this can last for quite a while. This is also why backgrounds are usually more detailed and intricately shaded than the characters in the foreground, as a single background screen time is hundreds of times longer than a character's frame of animation. You might as well put a lot of effort into something if you're going to spend quite some time looking at it. So, as the background doesn't need to change all too often, the number of background frames to create is reduced. 
This makes the proposed number we had, for the amount of backgrounds, drop quite a lot. However, this number also assumes that every second also needs to have 24 completely new frames of our character. There's plenty of times where a character can be, say, standing still, and so long as they don't move, only one drawing is needed. Frames are also often repeated, most notably for dialogue. Japanese animation breaks this down to its simplest form, usually using only three distinct frames for when a character speaks, closed, halfway, and open. Those three frames, combined with the background, gives us four drawings total, and these four drawings can last an animator a decent amount of time in an expositional heavy scene. That I come up with a solution right away, so please let me focus. Frames can also be repeated in a strategic sequence to create an animated loop. This effect is commonly used for secondary animations, like hair blowing, fire burning, walking, running, and sometimes even fighting. A good animated loop should be seamless, and can sometimes be used multiple times in the same shot when a lot of the same thing is happening at once, such as with explosions and crowd sequences. There's also a case where entire animated sequences are reused. This is common for scene transitions, character power-ups or transformations, and often because it is cheap and saves the studio a lot of money. Backgrounds are the easiest to reuse if characters commonly visit a specific location every episode, so one drawing can be reused for an entire television series run. Still frames, reusing animation, and animated loops all contribute to dropping the total amount of drawings needed to create an animation, so our numbers should be a lot lower than our original estimate, contradicting what was thought to be higher once we added all the backgrounds. Let's take a few moments to jump back onto the topic of layers, now that we understand animation a little bit better. Throughout this discussion, we've been operating under the guise that the two layers we have to work with are the foreground and the background, but dissecting our favorite animated programs reveals that it gets much, much more complicated than that. Frequently, every individual character is animated on its own layer, even if they share the same screen time with each other. This is because each character must act independently from each other in order to do what they have to do for their own scene. If one character is standing still, while another is moving around and talking, then the standing still character must be drawn on a separate layer, so that this layer can be extended and repeated, while other layers are swapped out to further progress the sequence. In many cases, a single character can have multiple layers themselves as well. This happens whenever a character may be speaking, while their body is doing something else. A classic example is in older Hanna-Barbera cartoons, when you see a very obvious distinction between the head of a character and the rest of the body. Their body is on one layer, having multiple drawings looped over and over again in a predetermined, timely fashion, while the head is on its own layer, having its frames a bit more strategically ordered, with the purpose of matching the correct mouth drawings to the voice actor's recording. I'd like to use this brief scene as an example as well, where you can see this character's body remains still, his mouth interchanges between select frames, while both his hair and the flames behind him repeat on a loop. The second character and the background remain static. Although you can break this down into one united video clip and count each drawing partnered together as a single frame, each frame was created by at least six different layers seven if you include the simulated fire texture, each working independently to support this one cartoon sequence. It gets even more complicated when you consider things like crowd scenes, editing in pre-existing drawings into a larger drawing, combining other forms of animation, and perhaps the one that might be a bit too hard to discuss for total beginners, the timing of each frame. While 24 frames per second is indeed the standard, Many times, frames might last for two, even three frames, in an unrhythmic fashion to create a specific speed for a movement. For example, if we split a second into 24 individual parts, this might be how long each frame lasts per 24th of that second. In a computer animated example, but still holding true to traditional animation, you can see that the characters move at a different frame rate than the background does, and their frame rate can increase during intense and fast paced sequences. Personally, I only animate at about 8 frames per second, and for some motions, I need certain frames to last a bit longer than the other ones, just to make the motion more easier on the eyes. There isn't an exact equation to determine how to do this, it's just something you have to play around with as every situation arises. But what I do find myself doing most often is making the first and the last frames of a motion last longer than the ones in between, making the transition in and out of the action very clear and perceivable. Another minor, but again very common technique I find myself doing, is making the closed frame of a character's blink lasts just a fraction longer than the frames used to carry the eyelids in between being closed and open.
In truth, with all the layers upon layers of drawings, characters, objects, backgrounds, special effects, title cards, concept art, storyboards, model sheets, promo art, poster art, and all the little doodles in between, the original 15,840 guess is such a massive understatement. There's always a large team of artists that can vary up to the hundreds, creating billions of these drawings to work together in harmony, bringing us the spectacular visual medium known as animation. There's never going to be an exact number of drawings needed to create these animations, but using what we've learned today, I invite you to re-watch a few of your favorite animated programs with an artistically subjective viewpoint. See if you can spot techniques like animated loops, or dissect how many layers a scene could potentially be made of. But for now, thank you for watching my video. Shout out to all the patrons who help contribute to the process of developing this series. You can stay up to date with all of my projects on my social medias, and join the Discord to talk to other passionate fans. And of course, you can visit my website to view my comics, animations, and other entertainment-themed projects. But until then, keep it busy.